Hello everyone, my name is Mike with Apple Informed and today I have my full review of the new 11 inch iPad Pro for 2018. So let's go ahead, jump in and get started. So I don't really have a script for this review, I'm just going to go over the things I liked and didn't like and things I noticed as I use this iPad Pro. I don't really like to list just the specs in my review, so if you want to watch a YouTube video that kind of just lists uh, the specs and everything you need to know about the iPad, I'm sure you can go find that somewhere else, but in this video I just want to talk about my experience using the the new 2018 iPad Pro over the last week. So the first thing I want to talk about is design and feel in the hand. It's the first thing you experience when you take the new iPad Pro out of the box this year. And wow, this is the first new iPad update where I've actually, uh, you know, my jaw opened and it was astounding to hold this thing in my hand. I remember when Apple back in the day, you really used to push for how thin their products were and they kind of lost that over the last few years and now they really have it back with this new iPad Pro. You can tell Apple is really proud of how thin they made this thing. In all their advertisements, they have about about two or three shots of just the actors holding the iPad and you can see it's very thin profile. So Apple is really proud of how thin they got this thing. And another design change as compared to a long history of iPads, I think five years back now, is we don't have the shiny chamfered edge and the curved sides. So we just have a regular 90 degree angle uh, anodized aluminum side and it feels fantastic in the hand. So it really took Apple a lot of years to realize that it doesn't need to be fancy to be functional and uh, it really holds true with this iPad. A really simple 90 degree sharp edge on the side of the iPad is all you need to hold it comfortably in your hand. So sticking with design, we do have a smaller bezel this year. Now it's actually not completely small because if you hold the iPad in portrait mode kind of like an iPhone the bezels on the top and the bottom or the forehead and the chin are smaller but now the bezels on the left and right side again if you're holding it upright like an iPhone those bezels are actually a little bit bigger if you compare it to the previous iPad Pro 10.5 inch now I actually don't mind this because it actually uh, lets me hold the iPad a bit more comfortably in my hand and the uh, same size bezel all the way around gives it a more uniform look so you don't have as thin bezels on the left and right side that's a very small compromise I don't think many people are going to care about that. You get that really nice uniform look and feel uh, throughout the entire iPad experience, which is something I think uh, people prefer over thin bezels. So another thing we get is Face ID is uh, finally brought to the iPad and it's an experience as you would expect. Uh, it is very fast and sometimes in my testing it seems like it's a little bit faster than my iPhone XS which already has that advanced Face ID system. So I am very impressed with the facial recognition on this iPad Pro. Um, there are a few little issues I have with it such as when I pick up the iPad there aren't really that many identifiers telling me which way is the right way to hold it. So sometimes my left hand or my right hand might block the face ID sensors and of course the software will tell you that but sometimes that's a, just a little bit uh, of too much time trying to unlock your iPad when you just want to pick it up and use it so I would kind of like just a little hardware tweak showing you which way is the right way to hold it I don't really know how Apple could implement that but sometimes when I pick up the iPad the wrong way my left or my right hand is blocking the facial scanner but other than that I am very impressed with face ID and it is very fast and works from a surprising amount of angles so something that a lot of reviewers have been talking about is the software experience and iOS 12 and if this could be a computer replacement. Apple sure is making all the accessories for you to think that it could be a computer replacement, but in my opinion, this is still an iPad and iOS 12 is still holding this back. These Geekbench results are coming in faster than my 2017 15-inch MacBook Pro, which is ridiculous, and uh, really iOS 12 is holding this thing back. There are just some compatibility issues. Some apps aren't completely considered Pro yet. I mean, we are getting Photoshop, but we don't have uh, Final Cut Pro, the entire Adobe suite, and just some very small file system issues also make this thing feel less like a computer. Uh, you do have USB-C on this new iPad, which is great, but it isn't compatible with a lot of accessories at launch because the app makers haven't updated their app. And also, you cannot connect an external hard drive uh, to this iPad Pro, even though it does have USB-C. So it is a bummer. I think if it is, uh, I think if your USB stick actually has a light on it and you plug it into the iPad, the light will light up so it does know that it is plugged into something, but the actual software installed on the iPad cannot recognize uh, that USB drive simply because it doesn't have a, uh, an app to open it to view your files in. So hopefully uh, we can see that next year with iOS 13 brought to the iPad and we could have more of a real file system uh, on the iPad Pro, which would really make this a pro device. 
Another small issue and uh, something that actually kind of got resolved just before I reviewed uh, this iPad and just before I went to sit down and record this is some apps aren't compatible and just before I sat down, the Twitter app just got updated but I'm still waiting uh, for the YouTube app to get completely updated. Uh, when you do play videos, they do play uh, in full screen at 16 by nine but when you are browsing through your home screen and your subscriptions page on YouTube, there is still a little bit of a letterboxing or a pillar boxing as you call it uh, around the app so it just doesn't fill the entire screen I would like that nice bright uh, YouTube UI to fill the entire screen and show the rounded corners I guess we have to wait a few more weeks for the software team at Google to get on that but uh, usually they prepare their apps for like new iPhone launches but it seems like app developers don't really uh, get their apps ready for new iPad launches, something that I would like them to uh, start focusing on a little bit more in the future, but uh, we will see these apps updated. It will just take a little bit more time. So another small issue I had is the oleophobic coating, which is a coating that Apple puts on all their touch uh, screen devices is not as good as it was on the previous iPad. So this coating is meant to mitigate the issue with fingerprints and it has gotten really good over the years. The oleophobic coating on my iPhone 10s Max and on my iPad Pro 10.5 were fantastic, but it seems like because Apple is focusing so much of their time to uh, lowering the reflectivity of the display that the oleophobic coating has gotten really bad. And anytime you touch the screen, even if your fingers aren't that oily, you're going to have fingerprints on the iPad. So you better carry a microfiber cloth with you because this thing does pick up a lot of fingerprints and it is kind of frustrating with all the money Apple has. You think they could could put a little bit more research and development into uh, creating an oleophobic coating which minimizes glare and also keeps fingerprints away. But uh, just a little issue there. Uh, keep in mind if you also do get the space gray color, if your fingers are a little bit oily when you hold the iPad, you are going to have a lot of smudges on the back of the iPad Pro. So just keep that in mind if you get the space gray color. Uh, one small thing I should mention is now that you have Face ID, you do get a uh, front-facing portrait mode. So in the camera app now, you do have a uh, dedicated portrait mode, just like on the iPhone, except when you go into that portrait mode, it is only on the front-facing camera. So this iPad does have Face ID, but it doesn't have as advanced of a camera system as the iPhone XS, where it has a dual camera system. So you can't get portrait mode on the rear, but you can get it on the front. So the camera just defaults uh, to facing you as you uh, go into portrait mode. Uh, with this, you do get an emoji and Memoji, which is kind of fun if you want to send a little animated character to your friends over iMessage. So that is uh, kind of a nice addition to have on your iPhone and now your iPad. So moving on to some accessories, I have the uh, new Apple Pencil 2 and the magnetic charging pretty much changes everything with this iPad. Before, I would take my iPad Pro 10.5 and my original Apple Pencil to school and I wouldn't really know where to put the Apple Pencil and charging it before class was just so crazy. I looked like an idiot. I was plugging in my pencil to the bottom of my tablet. It was just so dumb and I'm so happy that Apple now implements this magnetic charging method, very similar to how Microsoft is doing it on some of their uh, Surface devices. So a uh, much, better, uh, much better experience with the Apple Pencil. It does have a few other little tweaks, like it has a, a flat side so it can connect to the side of the iPad. And it also has a, a touch sensor so you can double tap the end of it to switch between your pen and eraser. So uh, just some tweaks overall. The latency isn't uh, improved at all, but it still really feels uh, like you're drawing on an actual piece of paper. So the Apple Pencil uh, keeps getting better and now that it attaches magnetically, it changes the entire experience with the Apple Pencil. I also bought the folio cover in the uh, the gray color or the charcoal color, and it is a really nice cover, but here in Canada, it was $120. So I remember when I used to go buy a smart cover, I'd buy the polyurethane plastic one, and here in Canada, I think it was like 50 bucks, which was still a lot for just an iPad cover, but now because I'm paying for such an expensive folio cover, it attaches magnetically to the back of my iPad, and uh, Apple calls it a smart folio. don't really know why, maybe because it wakes up the display when you open it, but $120 bucks for a folio case is kind of ridiculous, but I did want to protect my iPad because I don't have Apple Care, so I guess that's kind of just kind of something I have to put up with. Uh, like I said, I will probably get a third-party case just to see if it offers uh, anything better, but the folio case is pretty thin. It is really nice on the iPad. It has a really nice microfiber uh, lining, so it protects your screen, but it just is a little bit expensive for me, so keep that in mind. If you are spending a lot of money on this new iPad Pro, uh, Apple's first-party accessories are going to be uh, premium but very expensive. 
So one final note I wanna leave this video on is applications are kind of what shape devices. When the iPhone first came out, its potential laid all in the apps that developers could make. And the same thing goes for the iPad. Of course, Apple does have to change the software experience to really be more of a pro experience on the iPad. But really, if we could get more pro apps coming to the iPad Pro, uh, that would make a lot more sense. We are getting full-fledged Photoshop coming in 2019, but I really would like to see the full Adobe suite and also some Apple apps like uh, maybe Motion and Compressor and Final Cut Pro for people that really want to do photo and video editing and all this intense graphical stuff on your tablet. So uh, applications are what shape devices and if Apple can really open up the ecosystem and really separate iPad's version of iOS from the regular mobile version of iOS, I think it really could unleash the potential of this iPad. So uh, guys, those are my thoughts on the 2018 11-inch iPad Pro. I uh, really do love this thing. There are a few things like I mentioned, like app support and the oleophobic coating, but really this is a great iPad. It feels so futuristic in my hand every time I pick it up, and it just has more of a uniform, complete feeling when you are using it because it has that same size bezel all the way around. And before with iPad, it would kind of force you that this is the right way to hold it based on the different size bezels around the around the screen but now since they're the exact same size bezels everywhere there really is no wrong way to hold the iPad you can even hold it upside down and face ID will still recognize your face so a really great experience overall I'm very happy with this iPad if you guys have got a new iPad this year tell me in the comments down below also tell me your thoughts on this review did I miss anything is there anything you wish I had mentioned uh, tell me in the comments down below we can have a great discussion on this product other than that, guys, thank you so much for watching. My name is Michael with Apple Informed, and I'll see you in the next video.